Hello, and welcome to theCUBE back here to NYSE for our media days. We wind down, the bell is closed. People are pouring out, they're putting mad monies up and running, it sets up, up and running. Kramer's doing his show, and they got a party setting up here for all the activities. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got Winston here, who's an accomplished investor, author, adjunct yeah. professor at NYU. Winston, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Uh, thanks for spending the time. Thank you, John. So first of all, you got a book here, so show the yes. book, okay. hold it up to the camera. Of course. Hunt for the Unicorns, put that yes. camera right there, exactly. Hunt for the Unicorns. Um, you have had, you got a great background, I want to set the yeah. table. Yes. You, um, you were managing a sovereign fund, yes. okay, you're now managing a family office money for private investments. Yes. You're an adjunct professor at NYU, you run the department for public investing. Yes. You're an author. Um, you got a good aperture of experience in looking at what high growth looks like, right? and then what bets to make. So yes. you've made many bets. First of all, yes. take us through what is it like, mm. one, doing it, and then how are you making the bets today, and what are, what's going on with the bets in the market today? Oh. This Start with what you do first. Really, really kind of trilling down <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah. So for, first of all, uh, I, I think you know, my background is very much like at the, in the intersection of the three pillars, law, finance, and the tech, right? And it just happened that I started as a material science major, also, also did a software programming, which gave me the foundation for my today's focus in the digital economy, right? And from there, I become just like you. I went to the Wall Street, become a happy lawyer, banker, JP Morgan, and then uh, institutional investor, a sovereign fund uh, for global investing. And now uh, I'm based in New York, uh, a part of a single family office on uh, tech investing, and also a NYU professor on the, and a program director on the uh, 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 on the community of the public investment funds, uh, yeah. which are the largest long-term capital investors in the world, like the sovereign funds and pension yeah. funds, right? Uh, what's, so, what's more fun, yes. being the professor or yeah. <laughs> making all thing to pick one? What's more fun? Uh, yeah, and obviously the, the good thing is to do both as an adjunct <laughs> professor. You know, you, you can you can be teaching and also work with these yeah. uh, big investors. On, adjunct on, means on, you come in. Professors. It's like you're uh, freelancing, but you get the you get the benefits of a professor, but you don't mm. have to go down the track. Right. Like the tenure professors, exactly. if I understand correctly. Correct. So you, get Correct. To, you get to have fun. Yes. Yes. You know. I, you because I can engage uh, guest speakers, uh, you know, the executives of the sovereign fund pension funds, uh, because they enjoy uh, uh, talking to the students as well, right? And also, uh, NYU provides an academic platform yeah. to engage these guys to compare thoughts about their latest investing. For example, digital infrastructure as a yeah. big topic these days. I love, I love mm. the, uh, mm. love the focus, and mm. love that you got all your hands and a lot mm. of good action. Mm. Let's talk about digital investment infra infrastructure because we're right. seeing this become the big. Focus certainly. Yes. Obviously, everyone talks about the big clouds, the capex. Yes. There's clearly the Gen AI wave is here. Yes. Um, there's been a hype cycle. Okay. Yeah. Some say the air is coming out of the balloon a little bit, but right. this clear productivity gains where you're seeing a bubble won't pop. At least that's my opinion. I think it's pretty much well well agreed on. I think so, you're right. So there's low hanging use cases, but there's still a lot of thorny issues coming. Yes. But. It's a reset, re yeah. retrofit. What's your view of the current digital infrastructure mm. thesis of the market? Are people paddling as fast as they can, trying to go as fast as they can? Is scope where we are in the progress in your mind? Terrific. Now, I, I think this is such a big story, so it will lead it to multi-trillion investment opportunities going forward um, in terms of like a digital infrastructure, right? Uh, so, the, so the first is quite obvious, it's, it's the, the, the physical, layer of digital infrastructure as we have seen the runaway stock price of NVIDIA, the physical layer, right? And also the GPU as a service yes. type of thing. And then the second, you know, we are seeing the development of a cloud computing, right? Which you, 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 you are a the, the, uh, big expert on that one. Uh, the, the evolution of data lakes, uh, the evolution of a hybrid, hybrid cloud. Yeah. Uh, so we have tremendous investment into, into that area, right? And then the third, Third layer is just like the, the initial data preparation infrastructure. You know, like how how do how 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 do do individuals as individuals, I mean, uh, users uh, as well as the enterprises uh, uh, collect, manage, store data going forward. Right? You know, we need a lot of that. These kind of basic infrastructure as well. Uh, so all these will lead to. Uh, uh, multi-trillion dollar investment opportunities. But the, the biggest one, uh, which which mostly relevant uh, to these uh, biggest uh, uh, long-term capital investors uh, would be the, the, the physical ones yeah. going forward. Yeah. Um, because uh, in, in, the, in the past, they are big investors, 
in the uh, in the real estate or traditional infrastructure, like, like uh, transportation, right? Uh, like uh, 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 like the uh, the utilities. But now they see digital infrastructure as a new infrastructure as a class yeah. for them. Yeah, we just did a big thing on mm. Economist. The, our Cube research team just published last month mm. in the print edition, Digital Twins. Right. Not from a manufacturing standpoint, but from a the fact that you can use digital to simulate and make efficient yes. physical things. Yes. And that now they're, they're both first party citizens with each other, not one second party mm. subordinate. It's all equal because if, if done properly, yes. the gains mm -hmm. from either no defects in manufacturing translates right. to Better sales of your and sales of marketing, or better process. Mm -hmm. Whatever the process is, you can do some things with digital. Yes. This is the, f the first time I've seen that happen, mm -hmm. where it's actually into the process, not just a bolt on after the fact. Yes. This is a big change and should it's a, change it's a the economics. before, then after. Yeah, right? so the economics mm -hmm. will change because mm -hmm. you're going to be more productive. Yes. What's your view on that? Do you, you agree, yes. obviously, or no? Or what's your, yeah. what's your reaction? It's, 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 it's quite interesting because. Metaverse concept came up from uh, uh, Facebook, and now probably and, and it, it didn't do very well for uh, Facebook right uh, during 2023, uh, 2022 and 2023. But now it could well could be uh, Facebook uh, that will add into the AI concept and make the metaverse concept relevant again. Uh, and this is the digital twin uh, uh, concept you mentioned. But now it's slightly uh, different and more more intelligent because now you have the AI component yeah. added to it. What kind of investments mm. are you making right now? So talk about mm. the, your, your current role is you've got mm. um, fa family office, which means someone right. who has a lot of capital. Mm -hmm. It's not kind of like a hedge fund or VC, but they have, they're yes. deploying, they're making investments, bets. Yes. What's your thesis right now mm. um, on the bets you're making? Mm -hmm. um, how big of the checks do you write? Can you yes. share that information? Is it proprietary or what's the? Sure. Yeah. No, I think the, 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 the good thing about uh, uh, Working into a, a family office uh, is, is 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 that it's very nimble, so they can get into a new trend like AI very quickly, right? <laughs> and and for the for the sovereign fund type of circle, right? Uh, you know they want to write a big check, uh, and they want to typically uh, uh, get into a, a get into a startup once it is more de-risked, yeah. right? So 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 being a partner of a single family office uh, gives me the opportunity uh, to get to see. Companies in their early stage. So risk yeah. profile is different. It's a risk totally. Yeah, and the check obviously is smaller. Let's say yeah. uh, typically you know five to ten million uh, yeah. for the seed round or A round, mm -hmm. uh, and then then we try to be active uh, into the company uh, with active with the company after the investment, so yeah. we can help them to to grow yeah. with the institutional connection. Yeah. So it's like a yeah. nimble investor, yeah. uh, but. With the institutional, you're connection. partnering with the entrepreneur mm. yes. and the founding te entrepreneurial team yes. to grow that, whatever that line of sight objective: beachhead, product market fit, yes. scale, go to market. Exactly. These are the normal things you start to see trajectory. That's right. That's right. And the connection with the institutional investors is, is super helpful for their later runs. Yeah. Right. But at the very beginning, uh, the family office, you know, can be this quick in investor uh, during their early stage when they're still. Uh, uh, early in their revenue path, yeah. or they're uh, they or they are uh, at the early stage of signing up their first five uh, enterprise uh, customers. So you can make mm. decisions quick. Mm -hmm. You can have a uh, um, risk profile that's more private, yes. the early stage private yeah. or growing early stage. Yeah, um, and maybe a little risk taking. Yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> that's the fun part. I mean, yes. there's no reward without risk. <laughs> yes, lock in risk verse. There's a cap on that. You, it's yes. symmetrical. Less risk, less upside, right? Yes. I mean, this is how it works. Exactly. Um, have you seen um, anything change on the landscape around entrepreneurs? Mm -hmm. You're seeing a lot more, and we're seeing this with the NYSE Wired community, mm. a lot more accelerated mm -hmm. um, time to value, meaning yes. whatever that value point is. It could be traction, it could be a mm -hmm. funding round. Right. Um, you're seeing a lot more operating leverage from digital. Yes. What's your perspective on this? Because you're seeing new formation patterns around mm -hmm. how teams are formed. Yes. We heard about the 10X engineer in the cloud. Remember that? That was that yep. was a function of better labor ac access yes. in the cloud. Yes. Now you got business productivity with yes. AI, so you have a, a, a 10X potential force multiplier on yes. productivity. <laughs> yes. So, okay, I don't need a third co-founder. I don't need mm -hmm. maybe no one, or solo entrepreneur, solo general partner That's in the right. VC world. So the, the, the labor market's changed, and any thoughts on that? Yes. 
So I think you're absolutely right that it's, it's much easier for a founder to, to start a startup, right? Because uh, they, they get a lot of, uh, let's say, shared uh, uh, digital infrastructure uh, resources like a cloud, right? So they do not have to build up IT uh, system. They, they can start with, with yeah. a cloud. Or uh, because of the AI, they get the help from an AI system, right? Uh, uh, so, so, so the startup process becomes much easier. But at the same time, uh, I think you're also right. I think your concept of like faster path to success <laughs> is very obvious yeah, today, yeah. right? Because the, 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 the global market, uh, capital market, uh, is pretty tight. Yeah. Uh, you know, like you, you see guys like OpenAI uh, can get to 6.7 billion round uh, done within yeah. a few months. Right? <laughs> but for, 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 VC, for, for some startups, maybe they're going to take yeah. them uh, quite, a, quite, quite a few months or even a year right, to get a, a round done in, in this market. Uh, so they have to show pass through success much more quicker, but either by signing up a few clients or, or by signing up a, a partnership with a big name. Uh, either way, they have to show uh, uh, their path to, to be institutionalized more quickly than before. Okay, so you mm. got the book Hunt for mm. Unicorns. Yes. Okay, you're seeing now a new batch of unicorns coming on. Mm. How do you identify the unicorns? What's their formula for success? Most most artists don't want to share their formula for success, mm -hmm. but you know, if you could give it yeah. a little teaser around, okay, mm. what do you look for? Yes. When you look for those unicorns, because the best investors that I've met on yeah. private is they buck the trend, they see something before someone else. It's not a herd mentality. Correct. They'll see waves. Yes. But they'll you. Ha you have to understand, you can't be too out front of your driftwood of that wave, or mm -hmm. if you miss it, you're on the other side. So mm -hmm. it's a lot like surfing, I guess, but what do you look for from a pattern, seeing things early, going, mm, that's going to that's gonna connect that dot. What's, what's your yes. formula? Yes. Um, now, this, is, this question is very relevant to the space of the, uh, of the public investment funds. You know, in, in the past, uh, these sovereign funds or pension funds, right, they become the new VC and they tend to be the liquidity provider. You know, they, they come in like a pre-IPO round, yeah. uh, putting large check into it. Uh, in some way, they are unicorn, more unicorn makers than unicorn yeah. hunters. Yeah. Because they, when they write that check, actually, by definition, uh, after and a few hundred And the VCs lock in their IRR. They exactly. House money going forward. Exactly. Changing uh, the dynamics. Yeah, so, so that was kind of the, 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 the happy hours of the old days. Right yeah. at the time, uh, the, the keywords are mobile payment, mobile applications, and a mobile user traffic. Yeah. So if you, so if you have a mobile application powered by mobile uh, payment, uh, you can accumulate mobile user traffic a lot. So they, you can show a nice chart of, of uh, uh, user growth and maybe uh, revenue growth, right? And then you say, oh, "This is great. We can go IPO." But that story is no longer <laughs> in, the, in this market, right? Yeah, yeah. So in this market, uh, people want to see real technology and a real application that can lead to real productivity gains, right? Uh, so even the, the, the large summer fund, the pension fund, they become early stage investors because they want to yeah. go into real tech and they try to capture the early value, yeah. Yeah. right? So in this context, uh, a, a real uh, successful startup has to have a niche advantage. So be uh, a unicorn hunter, mm, yes. not a unicorn maker. Exactly. Because there's always a cap on that because the risk mm -hmm. profile is limited, constrained by that risk profile. Yes. Yeah, there's some liquidity, some incentive to kind of get you in. Yes. But you're not really making the, that unicorn happen. Th that's right. You're yeah, because the earlier model, the, the big investors, in some way, just lazy. Yeah. Right? They would say, if it become a, a pre-IPO, yeah. that means it's de-risked. So, so I'm ready to write that 100 million check. Yeah. Right? And that was too easy. And now, now for, for various reasons, right? Companies stay private for much longer. So, so, yeah. so even the, the long-term investors, yeah. they want to get into the company earlier because that plays into their stress. Okay, so you got a fun mm. job. What are you most mm. excited about and mm. how many checks do you write? Because I'm mm. imagining uh, you're probably not writing a lot of checks, right. or are you? Or what's mm. the frequency? Is it a feel? Mm. Do you, what's the due diligence? Take us through some of the process. What are you excited about and process mm -hmm. and just metrics of how you invest, check size, number of deals, et cetera. Yeah, so, so definitely the, the, the check frequency is much, small, uh, much slower now yeah. than before. Yeah. Uh, and for good reasons, uh, for good reasons. Uh, because as, as we discussed, right, in the mobile internet era, uh, everything is very uh, standardized. Uh, mobile application, mobile payment, mobile user traffic, yeah. right? Yeah. And now 
it's, it's, it's about a real technology or, or hard tech, uh, a new innovation uh, from the digital uh, ecosystem. So uh, AI seems to lead to a interesting vertical, yeah. but uh, the application is still yet to be proven, right? Uh, so we try to be in that space, yeah. uh, but at the same time, we tend to be very selective. So traction, ma careful. traction matters. Oh, totally. You got to see the traction. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, what. And you want to see the path to success. Yeah, exactly. You know? All right. And so, what are you most excited yeah. about right now? As mm. you, as you, as this is starting mm. to come back, we're seeing yes. post-election a lot of market activity. Obviously, yes. you know, uh, it's a relief rally, but also some people see yes. at least we know what's happening. Yes. And there's no anxiety, at least from a uncertainty standpoint, yeah. known and unknown. What do you, and, and you're investing in some great area. So yes. congratulations on that. Fun. Mm. What are you excited about? Uh, digital infrastructure. Uh, you know, right now the digital infrastructure story is just so huge. Like it, it, the, the the numbers co are coming in, just uh, are just uh, mind-boggling, right? So, for example, uh, recently Equinix right announced a 15 billion partnership uh, with uh, two two big public investment funds, the Singapore GIC and the Canadian Pension CPPIB, right? And so they tried to uh, build 15 billion dollar. Uh, new data centers, like yeah. triple their yeah, yeah. existing hyperscale yeah. cloud uh, uh, and uh, CapEx computing. is off the charts with the, the yeah. cloud guys. And you right. mentioned Edge, you had an yes. Edge investment. Talk about that one. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, so the family office uh, I'm involved with uh, recently made an investment into uh, an edge computing AI company called Amada. Uh, you know, it's a U.S.-based uh, tech company that uses modular data center to handle data in remote places like uh, oil fields, yeah. like uh, mining factories, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, in, in these remote places, you know, the, uh, they, they, they have uh, some existing data system, for example, yeah. industry camera, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. or, or, or the supply chain yeah. uh, over there, uh, but they haven't, have never done much with that data. You know, that's mm. that mm. that edge mm. in military they call it the tactical edge. <laughs> exactly. You need to have mm. operational, yes. you know, um, agility. Yes but also performance. Yes. And that's why these kind of footprint, mm -hmm. modular footprints are in demand because yes. there's need there. Mm -hmm. Power is needed, so solar is probably involved. Totally. Right? So totally. cooling, yes. that's built into the modular. Totally. So it's prefabbed, yeah. drop in a data center. Yes. Pop-up yeah. data center. So it's almost like a new market, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, edge computing. Uh, yeah. But it will be a very big market. You know what? Because uh, uh, today we have more connected things yeah. than connected people. Yeah. And it probably will more so in the coming years. We, and I, mm. I love infrastructure. You, uh, mm. People know that I love infrastructure, mm. so I'm kind of biased. But mm. you're seeing the evolution. Back in the old days, you had telephone closets for where you put the, where the wires were. And then you had, everyone knows in the street, those things where the, yes. the cable guy has to install stuff for the phone company back mm -hmm. in the day. Those are small cabinets, yes. By our standards, yes. You could almost envision these yeah. kind of cabinets, yes, near yeah. light poles or, you know, or bigger cabinets near where there's critical need or critical infrastructure, being standard, and then obviously with wireless, mm -hmm. 5G, 5G, yes, is beautiful, right? Yes. I mean, and you got Wi-Fi, yes. I mean, Broadcom's got Wi-Fi going gigabit, yes. 10 gig, yes. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. That's why the cloud computing going to be a lot more diversified going forward, right? You know, it's kind of back and forth. You know, people in the past, people are afraid of a hyperscale, and then they, then they <laughs> say, oh, we're going to go into hyperscale. <laughs> but now they say, actually, maybe <laughs> there are a variety of uh, cloud services we can think of, like uh, a combination yeah. of hyperscale and these uh, nimble data centers yeah. you yeah. described. I mean, it's distributed mm. computing. I mean, I, I'm, mm. I'm sold. I mean, I'm, mm. we're both still talking to ourselves and convincing mm. ourselves because we're both in agreement. Distributed computing paradigm's been around for a while, but it's, right. but it's becoming modernized. Yes. And the capabilities are multifold benefit than mm -hmm. old days. So I think distributed computing and now with cloud and cloud operations, yes. you have an operating model and operating mm -hmm. systems. Yes. You're going to start to see data do different things. Yes. You're going to see different patterns. Yes. It used to be north, south, east, west traffic. Well, no, no, now you're going to see co-located data, yes. harmonization layer. I mean, Really exciting computer science technology. Very much so. I share that excitement. You know, maybe from this uh, period of data yeah. science development, yeah. there will be another yeah. Nobel Prize for physics. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, whoever can change the laws of physics will win everything. <laughs> That's what we want. We can't yeah. move it. Yeah. But Winston, great to yes. have you on uh, yeah. for the folks watching. Winston mm. was also a captain at the NYSC 
uh, reception we had yeah. during media the week. Summit. We both had the AI yeah. Summit captain's hats exactly. on. Although I got mine from Kevin after he was up on the big <laughs> yeah. announcement. I was just a, a yes. running the table. But it was a really yeah. fun community. Yeah. You're um, you know, valued member of the mm -hmm. NYC Wired community, oh, thank you. and now the Cube Plus NYC. Yeah. yeah. Before we leave, I definitely need to mention about the, the election and the Trump and the oh, Simon Wall Street. Please, fund. yes, you know? absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, because uh, just last month, right, just before the election day, uh, Trump suggested the idea that the U.S. should create a, a sovereign wealth fund itself. You know, you know, after taking so many uh, investments from foreign sovereign funds, pension funds, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a uh, What's very your thoughts on that? Uh, uh, possible, doable? Do yeah. you think that's going to happen? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a quite a possible because uh, Canada and other Western countries like uh, Irish, right, you know, the uh, I, I, uh, uh, island, you know, they all have sovereign funds, you know, they set up uh, yeah. as a, a, a government fund to promote innovation and infrastructure. Yeah. You know, just like the U.S., they're not yeah. the surplus countries, uh, like the Middle East oil I, country, I company think, countries, but they can find a way to finance this sovereign fund to promote uh, industry policy, uh, infrastructure yeah. investing, and, by and the way, innovation. I think, well, first of all, mm. my opinion on that mm. is public-private partnerships right now exactly. are at an all-time high, number yep. one. Number two, yes. um, he already sees the value in, say, Space Force. Yes. He sees the value in a crypto fund. Yes. Because crypto is a limited resource, too. Yeah. And it's also data management, right? Blockchain <laughs> technology, data management. <laughs> so, mm. and also, he wants the U.S. to lead. Yes. And so that also aligns there, but now we're in a global economy, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's leading from a position of strength. So a sovereign yes. fund supports that. Yes. So then the next question is, where does the money come from? Does it come from the US? Does it come from yeah. a fund of funds? I mean, that's your mm. world, that's not my world, but like, I'm <laughs> yeah. just putting it out there. How, oh, would, how it, would you structure that? Oh, it, it could, could it be several uh, sources of uh, funding and it could be a combination or, or, or three. You know, one is the government uh, uh, budget and money. Right, because the government can always use a, a pocket to finance the new fund, <laughs> right? But that requires the legislative yeah. support, yeah. right? And then the the, yeah. the second one is 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 through uh, is through a public private partnership, as you mentioned, right? And 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 uh, this thing actually was yeah. tested a little bit because during Trump's yeah. last term, uh, Secretary uh, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin uh, socialized the idea of a U.S. Treasury Department work with foreign sovereign funds to set up a yeah. infrastructure funding. Right, and so there's a groundswell for this. Mm, then right? there's a yes. groundswell for this. E exactly, exactly. And then the third one is uh, really uh, kind of uh, through a new legislation, uh, yeah. like just like the Chips Act, yeah, Chips which, Act. which will mobilize the U.S. money for the yeah. for the for the chip industry. And you can you can imagine the similar yeah. mobilization setting up a, a vehicle for digital infrastructure yeah. or even for AI. the crypto in infrastructure. Uh, crypto, mm. di well, digital infrastructure, crypto, mm. smart mm. contracts as well for right. developers. Right. You got a generative AI, which is might look like a small, medium-sized business, but you can have a nice growing business, mm -hmm. maybe even going public on domains. Right. So, I mean, yeah, Winston, I love it, mm -hmm. I'm in. Yes. So I think the government should do it. Now the question is, who's <laughs> oversighting? Get the government out of the way. Put the money up and then yeah. get out of the way. I'd yeah. be my, that, my yeah. vote. That'd be the question to <laughs> President Trump when he enters into the office. Because he'll take credit. It has to be. It's going to be the biggest ever. It has to be the biggest ever. Winston, thanks yeah. for having you on the yeah. Cube. Thank you, John. Okay, I want to say thanks to the team here at the NYSE for going a little bit late. We went over. Um, appreciate all the support. And again, it's the Cube's East Coast studio here at the NYSE. I'm John Furrier, your host of the Cube. Thanks for watching.